Hey everybody, what's going on? Today we got a really special guest, uh, one that I've been wanting to interview for quite some time now. They are the brains behind the overwhelmingly popular Kristoff brand in Canada. And uh, what I have uh, right now in front of me is the multiple blends and the person I'm interviewing today is Jared Trudeau. He is the executive vice president of the company and he's here to tell us more about how the company evolved since its establishment in 2004 and the direction uh, that they're headed towards in the future. So, Jerry, thanks for doing this. Of course, man. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Right on. So, uh, you know, uh, like we mentioned just now, like the company, uh, Glenn Case, I believe uh, the name of the, the, the owner of the, of the brand, he established this company in 2004. So they've been, you guys been around for about 18 years, give or take. And can you describe to us just like how has Kristoff kind of evolved in sense like the establishment and like in what ways has the market changed and how have you guys evolved with it? Sure. Um, so it's a it's a pretty crazy story of like how everything kind of came to be. Um, so back in Chicago in the early 2000s, the late 90s, early 2000s was what in the United States we called the cigar boom. Yeah. Um, and basically everything was going crazy. You used to be able to you could go into a gas station or a smoke shop or most of the stores sold magazines and pipe tobacco and right, right. And, and they'd and they'd have a little shitty cabinet with cigars, you know, on the side. And when you walked in, I remember talking to a customer who's been doing business for 30 years. He said, when somebody walked in and picked up a cigar, you would hope they'd buy a magazine so that you yeah. could make some money. Because yeah. the cigars were so cheap, you know, they were only a couple of bucks. And absolutely. Um, and so then boutique cigars. Or, or what was considered boutique then started coming on the scene. So really, like La Gloria Cubana, for example, yep. by Ernesto Carrillo before he sold sold it to General Cigars, that was like one of the first boutique cigars. And then this little c- culture of small cigar makers starting to sell their cigars outside of their home states started to grow. And so um, Glenn's wife, now terry teresa right. um her her and her father were cigar brokers in chicago when he met her glenn was a guy who probably he went on a fishing trip up in canada a couple of times a year nice. and uh and would smoke cigars up then but he wasn't like super into cigars um he was a vp for um HSBC, like BMO Harris banks. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He, he had like a, quite the extensive financial background prior to yeah, yeah. getting into Big it. Big corporate sure. career. Kind of like um, some other some other brand owners uh, that I, I've uh, come across in the industry. A lo- yeah, there's a, a lot of people came from outside the industry because this is fun to do. And yeah, whatever we did sure. before sure. wasn't yeah. that fun. Um, so, it's 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 um, uh it's definitely evolving with like the you know social media coming more apparent uh on an annual basis so sorry to cut you off continue on uh, your uh your story oh yeah no no you're you're totally right and the world's a lot smaller it's a lot easier to market yourself now than yeah. it was back then um so yeah so anyways so when when we were uh so glenn ended up meeting Teresa. And he was like, you know what? I don't want to do this corporate thing. He was in the corporate world for 18 years. He was a VP. Um, and he was like, you know what? I don't want to do this corporate world anymore with the politics and all the other bullshit. So he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help my wife and her father in their brokerage. And back then, we didn't have, it wasn't like, it wasn't like it is today where every major company has an in-house sales rep that works for them. Uh, There were brokers, so independent distributors. Yep. yep. Um, So in Chicagoland, for example, Glenn and Terry sold Rocky Patel, Drew Estates, Oliva. Wow. Yeah, all of these different brands. Ernesto Carrillo's La Gloria Cubana, they sold everything that you could think of. All these big companies that you know have their own sales force now, uh, they use brokers because they were small operations just getting started, you know? so what would happen was we would grow the company or Glenn and Terry would grow the company to where it'd be whatever, up 35% for the year. And then whatever, Oliva or somebody would call them and say, congratulations, you're up 35% for the year. You're fired because we can afford to hire an in-house rep that just sells our cigars. No so you way. Sl- that's, that's how. Yeah, man. Was that, was so that you- the trigger point to starting uh, his own boutique brand after that? 
Yeah, exactly. So Glenn wow. was like, screw this. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not oh. working myself out of a job by doing a good job selling cigars. So I'm going to start it myself. So what ended up happening was uh, this guy, Rolando Villamil, um, who uh, has been in the cigar business for 50 years, he came to the U.S. to try to sell his factory cigars in the U.S. It was called Belmore. And we, Glenn was like, no, I'm not selling anybody else's cigars anymore, but I like you. Why don't we come to the Dominican Republic and make our cigars at your factory? And so Terry was like, what is a gringo from Chicago with no experience? <laughs> yeah, gonna yeah, go, yeah. You know, and uh, Glenn was like, I don't care if somebody else is figuring it out. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to go do I'm going to go make my cigar. So we went to the DR and started blending. And so it started with a sweet tip bundle cigar, then went to uh, a different bundle cigar, then went to uh, a cigar called the Vengeance, which we actually made with Rocky Patel. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite blends. I didn't know Rocky had a little. That, uh, so that was a different. That was a different cigar. Mm. So the, that Vengeance um, actually, we released it. That was our first like premium cigar, right? Right. And it was made at the Rocky Patel factory. It wasn't the same blend. It had nothing to do. It just had the same name. And it was basically, if you think about the name Vengeance, it was our getting revenge, you know, on. That you know, all these premium cigar companies that fired us because we were doing such a good job. Now we're making our own, and we're going to start eating your lunch and and doing our own thing, right? And right that on. was the kind of the idea. And so that came out, and it was a total failure. It just didn't, <laughs> it didn't it, it didn't sell it didn't sell very well at all. Um, it didn't get great reviews, and so we were like, screw this. We'll come up with a different idea, and then it ended up being. Um, Glenn's son's name is Christopher. Right. Yeah. That's the, that was my transitioning question. I was going to ask, like, where did the name originate from? So Christopher, yeah. for that, yeah, I, I can see it now for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it ended up being, we came up with this Christoph. It was our original Criollo blend. And it had the pigtail and the uncut foot and all the stuff that's kind of characteristic of Christoph now. And that took off and went crazy. And that's how we kind of got our start. When I first started smoking cigars, I it, it was uh, appealing to me to see like the characteristics behind the the like what makes the cigar different and what distinguishes it from other appearances. And because like you mentioned before, the pigtail for one, I mean, it's pretty common now with like the popularization of cigars like the pigtail. But me personally, I think about five years ago when I started taking cigars more seriously and smoking on a daily basis, I was like, no, this is cool. I just ripped the pigtail right off. Many customers of ours don't even know you don't need to cut the head of the cigar. And I, I, I show yeah. them like if you don't like oh do you have a cutter I'm like I have a cutter but to be fair you don't need to cut the cigar just rip it right off and you have a clean draw like it's designed for a clean draw and the foot of the cigar uh the, is the second thing here that's covered with extensive leaf and is that leaf I wanted to ask you this personally is that just excessive wrapper that's on the foot of the cigar or that's exactly what here? it is so because, it's, it's just a shaggy foot and that yeah. closes it and yeah. so the idea is the first couple puffs that you take, a lot of cigars, you light it and then you start to smoke it. But yeah. for us, what we really want you to do is take those first couple puffs yeah. while drawing. Right. And then you smoke the wrapper, which is the arguably the most flavorful part of the cigar. Yeah. And then you can see and it'll be like, oh, shit, like it's a big kind of punch of flavor. Yeah. Exactly. And then you can see as it gets into the blend, how the blend all comes together. So it's a good exactly. way to get an overall impression. You it's know? a it's a different contrast from uh, what I understand of the shaggy foot style, where I think there's excessive binder or filler, and then once it's like a, maybe half an inch long, and then once that binder or filler is smoked, you hit the wrapper of the cigar, and that's supposed to deliver a different punchier or more of a kick or whatever the the wrapper is composed of from wherever it's sourced yeah. from. Um, and I understand you guys in your portfolio, you guys have one of the most extensive lines. Like you guys are up there with like Alec Bradley, Rocky Patel. We have about 10 different lines of Kristoff alone in our uh, in our catalog. And like Corojo, Habano, Maduro, Cameroon, which is my favorite one. Um, Mine too. And, is it really? A lot of people yeah, share yeah. that opinion. And like, you know, there's so many others, but the Cameroon stands out to me. Um, it's an African Cameroon wrapper or is it a Cameroon seed? No, it's an African Cameroon wrapper. That's, yeah. that's the thing. There's, yeah. 
they're they're There's such really, a phenomenal rapper. I think it's my favorite rapper ever. Yeah. Um, and um, I've always been a huge fan from like before I was in in the industry when I was just a cigar smoker. Um, I used to love like the Don Carlos Fuente lines and stuff like that. I used to love a lot of uh, Cameroons. But oh yeah. What I yeah. ended up learning that was the most some of the most expensive tobacco that we've ever bought. I believe was, right now it's, it it is the most expensive in the world. It's the the Cameroon yeah. wrapper, as far as yep, I was Cameroon told. Cameroon yeah. and and uh, USA Connecticut broadleaf Maduro ends yep. up being really really expensive. But Cameroon is is more expensive by far. And um, really, the the thing with Cameroon is it's only grown by one really one collection of farms. Yeah, the, it's this Mirafel family's general has a farm in Cameroon. But really what Cameroon is, is it's Sumatra, Indonesian uh-huh. Sumatra seed grown in Africa. That's the wow. only thing that distinguishes okay. Cameroon from Sumatra. So a lot of times if you see a, a Cameroon and it's seven bucks or something like that, you can be pretty sure it's probably here in the U.S. It's seven bucks in Canada. It'd be one hundred seven dollars. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. But you can be pretty sure it's not Cameroon because just the wrapper alone. For it's not, it's it's not really an authentic Cam- African Cameroon rapper. Um, yeah. I, I think there's only a handful of uh, other brands that I can probably name uh, that will probably, uh, I think the award-winning CRV C- Milano uses, or no, that, that, may be, uh, that may be an Ecuador Sumatra rapper. I think the one I'm referring to yeah. is Siri G. The Siri G uses a Cameroon Siri rapper. Siri G is Cameroon. They yeah. buy a ton of Cameroon. Fuente buys a ton of, ton of Cameroon. Yeah. Um, and because uh, they're partnered with the Mirafel family, which is the Belgian family that grows all yeah. almost all of the Cameroon. Um, and then General has a farm for Cameroon as well. Um, so there's there's it's really hard to get. We it's ended up really buying hard to get at some auction. rainforest like 10 hours from like an isolated city. There's like no electricity. Like I, I've heard crazy stories of people who try to source from the that part of the world. It's just unbelievable to get. It really is very difficult. Um, but we ended up being able to buy some. Uh, we bought like 18 bales um, at an auction, a tobacco auction. And it was as, as expensive as tobacco gets. And it took us probably three and a half years yeah. to come up with a blend for it. And and yeah. that's not common. But Cameroon yeah. is just such a delicate wrapper. It's so hard to blend around without it's, overwhelming. Uh, it's phenomenal because uh, obviously you guys being sourced from the Dominican, the Dominican Republic, um, kind of comparable to Fuente's uh, humble beginnings when they started popularizing the Cameroon wrapper with the Hemingway and all those uh, other beautiful blends that they do. So it's like what I personally realized is you can have, for example, a Cameroon wrapper like the AJ Fernandez uh, Nicaraguan binder and filler. It doesn't seem to pair well together. It's just obviously it's all subjective, but for me personally, the Cameroon in the combination with the Dominican blend, or Domini- or even just uh, other other factors that might be of Dominican origin, uh, they, that seems to be the best pairing for me personally for a Cameroon wrapper in of itself. And I would say next up to that, I'm not sure if you guys have any plans, um, um or if you guys you guys do have a Sumatra wrapper. That's one of yeah, my favorite. Our, yep. Uh, our, our Sumatra, that's the red band. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's before we made the Cameroon. That was, I think, our our best blend. I yeah. Think. Yeah. 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 It's there's there's so many, so many phenomenal cigars with that wrapper, especially the ones that are grown in Ecuador. Apparently, yeah. apparently, uh, uh, it's uh, the Ecuador, the Sumatra seed grown in Ecuador is more of a distinguished blend as opposed to other other areas of the world and you kind of see that through like many award-winning sticks like they use that wrapper the ecuador sumatra wrapper um it seems to be a such more of a popular option nowadays and like uh i'm not sure who is the inspiration or like what sparks you guys like when you guys create these different lines of blends can you go over like the process as to how like in the is it the factory the the master blender who is that i'm not sure who it is is glenn case out there puffing uh testing 10 different blends a day What's that like? So you guys can like describe like seed to completion. How do you guys come up with a new blend? Yeah, so uh, that's exactly that's exactly pretty much how it happens. Yeah. So I, I'm actually going to be me, Glenn, and Ward, who's our COO. Yeah. Um, we're all going down to the factory in two or three weeks um, for four days or something like that to start developing new products. Yeah. Um, but basically, 
we identify, we, we, it starts with our sales reps yeah. and try to identify something in the market that may be a gap in our portfolio or something that's, that people seem to really be resonating with yeah, sure. um, or something sure. that we haven't made that the market is asking for. Um, and then we, and then we go out there and fly to the Dominican Republic. We sit in the office and before this year, unfortunately, he passed away this year. But that guy, Rolando, who started with us 18 years ago, um, he would sit, we would sit in his office and whether mostly Glenn is like the artisan behind everything, you know, um, for sure. So Glenn, Glenn would work with Rolando on blending and the, really the way it works when, when um, we've worked on projects is you go down there. You sit with uh, you sit with Rolando in the office, and you say, "You know what? We want to make a Cameroon, for example." Yeah. And you say, "Let's use some of that African Cameroon we bought. Um, let's do uh, Dominican binder, Dominican filler. Let's put let's put half a leaf of allure. Let's put half a leaf of lahero. Let's do this from these different sure, regions, whatever." Sure. And you basically give them a recipe. Yeah. And yeah, they, yeah. They 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 bring you a Presidente beer. And you sit in there and you drink your beer. By the time the beer is done, the guy comes in with three or four cigars. You all light it up. You smoke it. You say, ah, you know what? I really don't like that. Oh, Lord, let's switch it out for some whatever. Condega from Nicaragua or whatever. And you just kind of keep keep changing and keep warping things to try to develop it. Those, that's not like a particularly great example. But like, no, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like you, but, you're gonna, it's a continuous refinement process. And you just you start from something that it's like a gap in the market. And then you continue to narrow it down to figure out which one makes the most sense for your portfolio and for the consumer market kind of thing. Yeah. And the hard thing is blending for, for other people, you know, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Cause I don't like, I'm a, I'm more of like a mild medium, but sure. flavor kind sure. of smoker. Sure. Yeah, for sure. And, but there's tons of guys out there and you know, it being in, in the industry, like that just like to get their ass kicked by cigars, you know, yeah, a lot they of, a lot of our customers they... love like these San Andreas wrappers, uh, the, you know, like not necessarily yeah. Maduro. Maduro's not really, doesn't mean like the strong, it is the misconception, uh, you know, we could talk about that all day. Like when the people say, Oh, I want a Maduro because I love that overwhelming peppery spicy notes. It's like, I think you're looking for something else here, brother. Like, it's not, it's not something yeah, that, yeah. yeah. But like the San Andreas wrapper, for the most part, I, I figure it to be more of a stronger, more of strength uh, profile. And uh, another one that I slipped my mind, I had it on, I, I smoked nearly all the Kristoffs over the years. Um, if I remember, I'll bring it up later on. Our most popular blend, however, is the Connecticut. And yeah. uh, people love that, that mild uh, profile that you guys have to offer. And it fares well with a lot of other premium brands and it competes at such a phenomenal price point for canadian standards at least at 15 dollars. that's like our uh, robusto we also offered in the six by 60 i'll hold it up in case anybody watches this here in post-production um you can have multiple different options in terms of what you know burn time size what you're looking for can you talk about the the connecticut the composition of the connecticut well, of course like the wrapper speaks it's in the name but um is it also all like a dominican after that or how does that work no, so the the Connecticut has uh, so it's an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. Nice, um, nice. and then it has um, four different fillers from the Dominican Republic. Wow. Um, in the blend, so it's it also has a Nicaraguan binder, so it has a little bit more going on than traditional Connecticut's wow. do. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Which ends up making it, uh, I think, a more nuanced, interesting smoke. That's probably than a lot why customers. It's probably why customers love it so much, you know, because that Nicaraguan uh, dynamic probably gives it a much more interesting balance. Because I've smoked like all Dominican leaf tobaccos, of course, and they're not all the same. They each each factory has their own way of going about making their own composition, no matter where they source the tobacco from. The, as far as I'm aware, from my own personal experience, like there's mild can get really too boring it's like one dimensional you're kind of puffing on air and like when you mentioned that nicaraguan ingredient to it i think it's the binder that you were talking about that one in specific it's like i figured to bring a great balance and if anyone hasn't really tried that and they're more of a milder milder cigar smoker or beginning cigar enthusiast and they want to get more into it i would i've always recommended the christoph connecticut's um and you know it's definitely has some more of a balanced profile to offer than other brands that i've smoked for sure 
Um, I have a, yeah. I have a, I have a question from a customer, a customer of ours here, and he, he's a huge Kristoff fan. He says, "Hey, Jared, uh, love the Kristoff portfolio. Um, I was just wondering if you guys have intentions to blend with the Connecticut Broadleaf." So we, we do the vengeance that yes. we have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is is USA Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. And that blend. That blend has won number one cigar of the year, number two cigar of the year. That yep. is just an outstanding broadleaf Maduro. Um, and we have been wanting to work with that tobacco for a long time, but it's really difficult to source. It's really difficult to buy. In, it's, I mean, you can buy it, but like in the quantity that we would need to do to, to do a full production run, it's difficult to buy consistent quality. Um, yeah. Because most of the Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro is gobbled up. Um, it's not, it's like most of the farms that uh, Swisher buys a lot for their Swisher sweets. And they buy from the Connecticut they, Broadleaf farm in the, in the River yeah, Valley. Yeah, that's what they use. Yeah. Well, and they that's use. Crazy. I, I never, I never would have guessed. Wow. They're like the number one buyer of that tobacco. Yeah. What? And then now that, <laughs> now, yeah. And then now that Swisher owns Drew Estates. For their all of their uh, uh, Liga yes. Privada and yeah, all yeah, of those yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they pretty much gobble up most of it. Uh, then there's companies that are really well known for their Connecticut Broadleaf product, like uh, the like Pete Johnson with Tatuaje makes an unbelievable yeah. line of cigars Phenomenal. with, uh, with Phenomenal. Connecticut Broadleaf. Yep, beautiful wrapper, by the way. Like the the, the it is the, uh, subtle sweetness and the the power that it has. And the, just the history of the Connecticut River Valley in general is like something well worth uh, considering if you're like an experienced cigar smoker. It's also really expensive because you're paying, you know, you're paying first world wages yeah. to oh, yeah, harvest yeah, it yeah. And, Absolutely. and process yeah. it. And stuff. I, I so didn't, it didn't even factor that in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But it takes the, the Maduro process better than I think any tobacco in the world. Uh, it's, it's hardy. It's it's thick yeah. it's it's uh and you get a high yield um because the leaves are so huge um oh, so yeah. it's it's a difficult tobacco to buy a difficult tobacco to grow right. um and it costs the it cost costs, is commensurate sure. with that yeah when you say uh endures the maduro process uh is that referring to the fermentation yeah the tobacco yeah. leaf so okay. so the way that that many and it's kind of one of those misnomers that you see in the cigar business, but the way that most Maduro is done is um, just a natural aging process yeah. um, where you, you know, you kind of hang the tobacco and then time takes its course. Um, but because the Connecticut Broadly Maduro is so, is so such a, like a hearty product. Yeah. Um, the stock, you'll often see stock cut, like Liga Bravada yeah. made that very famous for right. this. The stock, stock cut, cut yeah, they just take this whole stem from the plant as opposed to trimming the leaves individually. Yeah, yeah. and they hang it upside down by the by the stalk. Um, yeah, and that allows all of the nutrients that have gathered in the stalk to kind of make their way into the leaf as it hangs. Probably and add more takes, flavor and richness exactly. to it. Yeah, it, exactly. So it takes the Maduro process really, really well. Um, very and interesting there's no tobacco like it there's no tobacco like it it's very interesting yeah uh so uh what is next in terms of like uh the future of the christoph brand uh you know a lot of companies that we've been talking to they seem to want to head towards a direction of like more of a global brand and just become like a more in the people product kind of thing not like just a cigar but kind of just for uh you know people oriented products so what is it uh, uh, about Christoph in the future that you can speak about? Maybe there's something that you guys want to keep uh, for the future and then discuss later. But is there anything at the moment that you can kind of give us and for like the plans of the Christoph going forward? Yeah, I mean, we're going to continue to expand as best we can. We're in uh, more than 40 countries now. Um, wow. So uh, I was in Germany for two weeks doing events. I was just came back from Canada. I did the Alec Bradley Golf Tournament. Nice, um, nice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was that. That was in August in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I missed that one. I, I was actually away on vacation. I, I had intentions to go. For I, I probably uh, would have had a few words and caught up and talked about Christophs for there for sure. Oh, that would have been great. And and um, I do go to Canada every year 
um, to work with Joe and Justin um, yeah. at least once a year. Um, yeah. And so I'd love to come down and, and oh, see the question. store and, and do question. an event or a tasting or something. We'd love, we'd love that. Yeah, that that that, that would be something. Uh, a lot of our customers, I'm sure, once they hear this, they would be very ex- excited about that because there's just too, too many Christoph cigar smokers in our region, um, and we actually have a hard time keeping stock. When I talk to uh, I talk to Joe and Justin a lot, distributors, and try to get them to give us like a heads up when they're bringing in any shipments and stuff, so we can notify our customers, whether it's through email or social media, other outlets and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, there's so many exciting things coming out for this brand clearly, and you seem to be such a experienced, true cigar enthusiast, such a great face, also like behind the brand, uh, next to Glenn Case, the owner. And it's something like, you know, we're definitely excited about to have you here if you ever come down in, in the summer or when are you thinking about it? Yeah, I, I will avoid Canada until it gets. Warm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I live in no Texas. Uh, oh, that's, I live yeah. in Texas, so um, I don't have to fight with the winter as much as I used to yeah, uh, living yeah, in New England. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then uh, I just um, I, I said I told this customer if I have time, I'll really this question over and we have a. Uh, a few more minutes here just uh, before you have to wrap things up. Um, the pricing is a very competitive topic in the, in the industry, and it's something that we kind of try to keep things leveled in the playing field. But Kristoff at $15 uh, for the Canadian market, like, you know, a lot of premium cigars are exceeding $30 here. How are you guys supposed, how are you guys supposedly giving such premium cigar experiences that with the quality tobacco and you know authentic african cameroon leaves and whatnot like at 15 dollars, how does that work so um and I, i'm going to be completely honest with you um yeah. the the way that we do it is by uh not making any money selling internationally <laughs> you know <laughs> i really... figured i figured because uh yeah. when, when you compare it to other brands that kind of cost more it's like I'm not sure like, okay, they're sourcing comparable tobacco. Obviously they have their own recipe and blending it together and aging in a certain way. Like that's, that's proprietary to each factory, I believe, but to be considerably cheaper with, you know, a, a lot of these cigars are like hidden gems in the market. Um, and, uh, I'm sure next time we have you on, like, I'd love to expand on this topic even further, but Christoph at $15 guys, insanely competitive for what you get. Uh, premium long filler. I don't think Christoph will ever make a short filler cigar. Um, or if that's in your interest, if you want to tailor towards a different consumer market, I don't know. But for your premium handmade products, you know, long filler, uh, you have a variety of different options to choose from, whether it's going to be a mild, medium, full body. We have about 10 different blends. www.smokemastercigars.com. We just launched an e-com shop that we've been working on for over a year. You guys can check out all the Christophs there. We ship nationwide, all Canadians. Free shipping over ninety nine dollars and one to two business day guaranteed delivery. Um, and with that being said, I think that just about wraps it up. I want to be respectful of your time as well, Jared. Uh, you know, uh, thanks so much for carving out time out of your day, your busy schedule. I know you do a lot of tours and you're always, you know, jump stuff. But you know, this has been fun, uh, and we definitely wish to have you on again soon in the near future. You can continue to talk about just kick it cigars in general uh and uh we'll go from there i would love to man thank you so much for having me and yeah if anybody has any questions feel free to reach out to yusuf and and then get back to me um uh you can shoot me an email whatever and i'll 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 answer any any other questions that you might have absolutely it's been super fun thanks again jared and uh we'll talk soon thanks man i appreciate it take care bye bye